For a lot of modelers, VMS may not be an overly familiar product line. However, for those of us who have heard of them, you will know that there is a buzz growing around this brand. Just like a lot of armor modelers, I first saw the VMS product showcased on YouTube being spruiked by everyone's favorite uncle, Martin Kovac. I loved the results he was getting and the positive way in which he was speaking about the product. I've loved the VMS products I've used, but today I've been given a product that is new to me and is part of their pigment jockey range. At first I didn't understand exactly what a pigment jockey did or was, but as I see it, it's VMS's range of pre-thinned enamel paint specifically designed to work with common tones when weathering your models. There are 10 colors in the range at present, spanning over three groups of color tones. Items 1 to 5 cover the earthy tones in the line. These are light earth, brown earth, sandy earth, dark earth and red earth. And please let me apologize to the people screaming at the screen for 4 and 5 being out of order in this picture. I hear you and I will aim to do better next time. You know who you are. Product 6 to 9 is the range of the rusty tones with the track rust, medium rust, fresh and light rust. The final colour in the line is number 10 and is a steel metallic colour. The product is marketed for general weathering, splattering and streaking effects. Interestingly, the pigment jockey line was developed in consultation with Martin Kovac and it's marketed as a reversible weathering liquid. So if you read between the lines, that means you can reactivate it using an enamel thinner of which VMS have their own line under the name of Universal Weathering Carrier. Universal Weathering Carrier, however, from what I can tell, is just the VMS mix of white spirit and from what I understand, the other brands should be compatible with this product. Pigment Jockey comes in a 30ml spill resistant screw top bottle. The dropper style of bottle is very handy for distributing and using the paint from a workflow point of view and will be handy for those of you who have been known to knock an open bottle of paint across the workbench. Is Downside of a bottle like this is it's easy for the nozzle to clog. This was the case with a number of the bottles I had, however a small piece of wire or a needle was all that would be required to clear that blockage. I'd had a play with these off screen and was able to create some interesting dusty and dirty tones. I was also able to pair the product with pigment powders to create volume and texture in some of the mud deposits. It was time to switch the camera on now and show you all the steps I took to achieve these effects. The colour that appealed to me most was the number one, Light Earth. I squeezed some paint into a bottle top and did the same for the Universal Weathering Carrier of which I'm just going to refer to as White Spirit from now on and I was ready to go. The product was applied in a number of different ways. For the front section I began by brush painting a volume of the paint along the bottom edge of the model. I was planning on trying a few different methods along the length of this model to act as a comparison, so excuse the lack of continuity. For the middle third, I applied the paint as I'd done at the front, only this time I blended the still wet paint with an old sponge. The sponge has had some small pieces picked from the surface in order to create an irregularity in the surface. All I'm doing is feathering the edges of this paint, but it's also adding an interesting speckled look to the finish. A second layer of the light earth is sponged over this part again, only this time it's over a smaller area. A hairdryer is a handy tool to speed up the drying process and fast track your workflow with this product. I'm then able to take a flat brush with a tiny amount of white spirit on it and blend the paint in an up and down motion. The brush I'm using has staggered bristles which will further affect how the paint is being moved and distributed over the surface. I want to leave the paint at the bottom edge of the model and feather it up as it moves up the panel. 
I felt there was a little too much of the dust color present in this area, so I'm able to remove some of it using a cotton bud moistened with white spirit. The middle area I applied with a sponge is also blended using the flat brush, however this time I found I didn't have to blend it up as much or remove as much paint due to the way the sponge had already started that process. The up and down motion also creates those subtle rain marks that helped integrate that effect in that area. Moving to a dark earth colour now, and by using that different tone with the lighter colour, I'm able to create the illusion of a fresh dirt deposit or possibly even the look of wet dust. I again apply this with a sponge and attempt to cover an even smaller area than I did previously. I'm creating these layers and building up the story of this model. The rear section of the tank is where the splattering and speckling is focused. This is the area where the most mud and debris would have kicked up off the working tracks and which is why this technique works so well in these areas. The effect is achieved by loading the paintbrush with the paint, which is light earth in this instance, and then flicking it across a toothpick or an airbrush needle to create the splatters. I'm thinking about the motion of the tank and the movement in the wheels and tracks and trying to angle these effects in a logical and realistic way. Any specks that are out of scale are easily blended using a fine brush and a touch of white spirit. Again with the layering only this time I'm using the darker colour, the dark earth, but as before I'm applying it in a speckling motion. A quick way to create volume and bulk up your effects using this pigment jockey product is to mix it in with a pigment powder. VMS do have their own range of pigments, however I don't have any at my disposal. In saying that, any pigment powder will work. Here I've mixed a European earth with the light earth pigment jockey. Pigment powders need something to bind them to the model as they are notoriously weak otherwise. By adding the pigment jockey, I'm not only able to create a custom colour, but I'm giving the pigment powder a binding agent that will help it adhere to the model. I'm then able to load the brush up with the pigment dense paste I've created and employ that flicking motion once again to build up the speckles, only this time the specks will have greater volume and a more three dimensional look to the mud. It was time to create some rusty tones and I figured the armour plate on the side would be a handy, logical, defined area to demonstrate the paints and what they could achieve. The track rust was applied first around the bottom left of that section and before it had time to dry the medium and then the light colours were sponged on, working the tones up to the top right corner. By keeping the paint wet I was able to create lines and runs in the colour also. I'm constantly introducing touches of white spirit off a brush into the mix to help the colours blend and merge together and I was able to create some interesting rusty looks in a very short amount of time. With the track rust still wet in the brush, I'm able to move to the middle third and carefully brush paint on some staggered vertical lines to create a wet looking active drip line or stain to add another layer to the weathering. That colour is also very handy to re-establish the damp look around the inner edges around that armoured plate. It's a matter of painting them on and then blending them out with a brush and a touch of white spirit. I thought I'd try and create some more prominent dust streaks. So again with the fine brush, lines of the light earth are painted along the top edge of the panel and that is then carefully blended in a downward motion. I'm cautious not to remove too much paint otherwise the effect will be lost. And the final technique I'll share is using capillary action to create voluminous mud effects. Moving to a Vallejo pigment this time and a small amount is heaped on one of the bogies. 
The loaded brush is then touched against the pigment mound and the fluid migrates through the clump. Once dry, it should be set in place and hold its volume. I continued to experiment with the Pigment Jockey product with other pigment powders as well as another VMS product, an Alkid binder. I'll investigate this another time for you, but needless to say, some of the results I was getting on an old set of tracks was really very encouraging and certainly worth exploring. There is a lot to like about what VMS are bringing to the table and what I've used I really like. I've mentioned many times their varnish is amazing and I've been using that for some time now with excellent results. When it comes down to it, we can't get away from the fact that the paints we use in this hobby are, in most cases, either acrylics, lacquers or enamels. And it doesn't matter what you call them or how you sell them, the facts are the facts. This line of pigment jockey colours is a line of enamel paints aimed at improving your weathering. They work beautifully alone, but when paired with a pigment powder, the effects you can achieve reach a new level. You can use other manufacturers' pigments and you are able to mix the paints with other enamels, or at least that was my findings during the testing. Do they work? Absolutely they do, and I was able to create some interesting and realistic effects using them. Would I be able to create the same effects using another product? Well, yes is the answer, but like with everything in this hobby, we all have our preferences and what works for some may not always work for others. So in saying that, I've managed to get a deal together for you guys so you can try the VMS line for yourself. Go to the VMS site at www.vms-supplies.com and at checkout enter the code WORKBENCH-BONUS for a 20% discount. This offer won't last forever and is limited to one per customer. I like the VMS philosophy and the targeted nature of their weathering products and I'm looking forward to using them in the near future. Remember guys, this is the greatest hobby in the world. Share it with your family, share it with your friends and let's be proud of what we do. Until next time, I'll see you soon.